Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today I'm talking about the new albums from The Black Dog, Post Truth, and Black Daisy Wheel. The Black Dog are Ken Downey, Martin Dust, and Richard Dust, and I have not talked about these guys in a really, really long time. I did a review of their Neither Neither album back when that came out in 2015, and that was one of the first reviews I ever did on this channel. I think it even got some attention from the guys themselves at the time, which I remember really freaking out over. Now, the Black Dog have one of the most interesting careers in the genre, having initially been a project with Ed Handley and Andy Turner of Plaid before they broke off and did their own thing, and Ken Downey being the only consistent member across every album. And not to mention the sound of the Black Dog has changed so much over the years. The appeal of their earlier, weirder, more left-field kind of exotic IDM albums like Spanners is very different from later, much more straightforward, minimal techno ones like the one I reviewed. Yet I pretty consistently enjoy most of them about the same amount. I don't think my opinions on their back catalog have really changed that much since 2015, so I could direct you to my review of Neither Neither for a rundown of everything, link is in the description, but if you're like me and don't want to sit through 2015 me being even more awkward than usual, with jump cuts like every three or four words instead of every two and a half sentences, uh, how about I recap my thoughts on their discography so far? <laughs> Probably the single weirdest entrant in the Artificial Intelligence series with all its Middle Eastern influences and stuff. Not one of my personal favorites of theirs, but definitely some fun to be had here. I don't listen to this one as often as I probably should. There are some really cool ideas here. Ah, this one. This needed a lot of time to grow on me, but it's become an all-time favorite. Certainly my favorite of their early period work. This one's Ken Downey solo and is pretty solid all the way through. Goes to show the Plaid didn't carry those first three by themselves. Ah, here we go. I think if you've never heard a Black Dog album before, I'd recommend this as a starting point. I think it touches on the appeal of their early sound and later sound at the same time. And now we're officially into later period Black Dog, with lots of spooky, minimal techno under a really tight and well-executed continuous mix. Awesome, one of my favorites. Kind of a slightly more hard-hitting and less atmospheric version of the last album, though about equally as fun to listen to. Suddenly, we get a mostly ambient album, trying to capture the kind of unpleasantness of going through an airport, as a response to the similarly titled Eno Classic. It's uh, not very much like their other stuff, but it's definitely one of my favorites from them. Just a really clever, creative, and well-executed idea, definitely check this one out. And this one's not as interesting compared to their other stuff, just kind of a representation of their live sets, but I still really like the continuous mix here, and it definitely has its moments. Kind of a retread of their last couple of albums, not a huge standout in the whole catalog, but still super solid with plenty of standout moments. What stuck out to me about this one was the fact that they seem to be going more for the making the individual tracks better than the complete whole. They're, usually they're very much an albums band, and I do really love that about them, but... This was certainly an interesting standout for them, another one of my favorites of theirs, and one of their best in quite a while. Which brings us to here. Yeah, I don't- I still don't think there's any album under the Black Dog name that I can say I don't enjoy to some extent. Would not at all mind doing a full series on these guys, as they are certainly deserving of one. I've just really consistently liked everything they've had to offer. So of course, when they announced that they were going to make two new albums and release them on the same day, I was certainly hyped for that. I think Downey said that post-truth is going to be more their usual techno stuff, while Black Daisy Wheel focuses on their more ambient side. And what was the inspiration for these? Of course, it's the modern era of misinformation. Neither and either definitely aligned itself with uh, similar themes. Back then, it's applied more exclusively to British politics, but was still kind of a uh, warning for the future, and now it's just kind of inescapable everywhere. <laughs> they pitched in the Bandcamp descriptions of these two new ones that Black Daisy Wheel is intended to be more compassionate and self-reflective, while Post Truth, of course, dives ba right back into the now more prevalent rabbit hole of fake news and political paranoia that inspired the last album. Now, the Black Dog are an instrumental outfit, so you do kind of have to look at the album covers and song titles and Bandcamp description to get their whole message. Maybe listen to some occasional voice samples added into some interludes, but those are mixed pretty low and don't call attention to themselves, but you get the idea. I figured whatever these albums were going to be, I was going to have fun with them, so what did we get with Post Truth and Black Daisy Wheel? Um, hmm, I don't know. 
Well, I, I think these two albums probably should have been in the same package. Having this contrast between the two does strengthen both of them, I feel. And if they were put together as a double album, that would make for a more interesting and enjoyable whole. But as separate standalone albums, I don't think either are among the best they have to offer. I will say while I got about equal personal enjoyment out of both, I do find Black Daisy Wheel the more intriguing of the two. It's a more unique and interesting entrant into their catalog. There's not quite as much precedent for the Black Dog making ambient music, obviously there's music for real airports, and uh, I would not say this is better than that. But it wasn't taming as high in the first place, doesn't have a concept or everything like that. Post-Truth, I think I like the inspiration behind it a little more, but it did not show anything new to me about the Black Dog that I couldn't already get out of their previous albums. If I took it purely out of context, I might even call it their weakest effort to date. Well, to be fair, I do have a pretty high standard for these guys, and even being below average for them is still pretty good, all things considered. I definitely did enjoy both of these. But you know one thing that would have made both of these albums even better as well? Continuous mixes. Yeah, they decided to repeat the Neither Neither approach here and allow all these tracks to stand alone on both albums. Well, most of them. I'll admit I praised this approach on my review of their last album, and I still stand by it working there, but the reason it worked on either neither is because one, they didn't have any albums that really did it like that. I think, I think Temple of Transparent Balls was the only other one. And two, all the individual tracks were so good they could mostly stand alone perfectly fine. Like I said, the Black Dog are definitely an albums band more than an individual tracks band. Having all of these disparate parts work together as a whole would have made this a much stronger effort in my opinion, and I know they are very capable in the continuous mix department. Hell, it's one of the main things I like about them. Their mixes are consistently awesome. Just look at one of their albums like uh, Liber Dogma. I mean, that's also not one of my favorites of theirs, but even if the songs aren't all the strongest by themselves, they had the mix to fall back on, something to give them more purpose and drive and bring everything together. Oh well, we got what we got. I mean, listening to Post Truth in particular, I can hear some like subtle shifts in tempo from track to track. I can tell I didn't really make this album with a mix in mind. Whatever, just kinda disappointing is the obvious lover of continuous mixes that I am. For all my issues though, these are hardly bad albums here. I would say both are at least good. For instance, the production on both is just as good as all the others. They can still deliver good sounding material here. The techno grooves of Post Truth are just as well done as always. A track like Cognitive Dissonance may not stick in my head much, but it certainly gets me pumped up for the beginning and the closer technological utopians take us out on a similarly engaging note. I like how that one ends in all those like stuttered synth loops that just kind of slowed down to a halt like an engine shutting down or something. There are some tracks with pretty serviceable melodies like Solipsism, The Truth is in the Post, and The Patti Smith Disaster. Uh, those are some song titles right there. The melodies here again aren't really the type to stick in my head like a bunch of the Neither Neither tracks did, but they do provide some emotional context to keep me invested. There are a few moments like FWB, uh, MK Future, and Anticipation Occupation that don't really grab me as much, being more metallic sounding and atonal, but they do keep up the atmosphere. It's not like other tracks of theirs in this vein on previous albums like Radio Scarecrow ever bothered me like that. Help with variety, I guess. There was one track that actually did stick out to me though on Post Truth. That Seance of Entitlement. Uh, the like the typing keyboard sounds on this thing combined with the synth melodies that imitate string watches make for really dramatic moments on this album that always catches my attention. And as for Black Daisy Wheel, again, it's no music for real airports, but it was definitely the more interesting album. Now it's not completely beatless. There are a couple of more beat focused tracks, namely We Must Repeat and By The By. But not only are they slower and more subtle than the techno stuff on Post Truth, being surrounded by all the more ambient material makes them stand out more. And as for the more melodic elements, well, uh, a couple of tracks did remind me of some other tracks from other artists. I did end up getting Central Plains by Carbon Based Lifeforms and Project 80 by Cabaret Voltaire in my head at some points. The title track here, Black Daisy Wheel, did sound a little similar to the former in some ways, but I think it could just be a coincidence. That track did have the biggest job to do, being easily the longest track on either album at almost 8 minutes, and that time is utilized pretty well. 
A lot of build up to a pretty subtle track, but the synth melodies here do really give off a dramatic and harsh vibe. By the way, I know they use the word compassionate to describe this album. I guess maybe by the standards of their work in the past decade that could maybe apply, but in general, I think that's maybe a bit of a stretch. This is a lot closer to, like, early Jean-Michel Jarre than, like, Brian Eno. Anyway, other highlights that stick out to me on here. Uh, Who He Was has some really neat choir-like synth pads that make this track sound more expansive and impressive. Sarah's at Smile and Auto Hoaxer <laughs> have are some pretty dramatic and intense beatless moments, especially like the strings again on the latter track. Uh, Out of Reach has some pianos, which I like. The closer on here, Tell Me What You Remember, had me intrigued since it has a featuring credit, someone named Emika, or however you say that. And it turns out that she just does some spoken word stuff in another language, and the track underneath her is just like one really dark drone for the most part. Though she does sound pretty strained and paranoid to match the mood of these albums. And Lost to the Black Sun is the one track on here with a segue blends seamlessly into the previous track to the point I didn't really even notice it was there until, I don't know, my fifth listen of this thing. Again, it's not a bad thing, I, I actually wish they'd done that more often. I mean, Post Truth did that with some of the interludes, but that was about it. Whatever. <laughs> I think that's about it as far as individual tracks on these albums go. Now, on the whole, I will have to admit I probably did find these two albums to be a little bit of a letdown. Post Truth delivered techno stuff that sounds like any of their other stuff they've done on previous albums. Uh, Black Daisy Wheel, while not sounding like any of their other albums so far, and certainly more of a standout in their catalog, certainly isn't anything game-changing here either. I still get much more enjoyment out of Neither Neither than even the combination of these two albums, even if they were, like, continuous mixes and put in the same package as mentioned above. But I did still enjoy the albums. I thought the idea of being these two contrasting works that help prop each other up in a way was executed pretty well when put together. And again, their production is still really spot on and can get me invested in all of these tracks while I'm listening. I come out at the end feeling entertained by both. I've, I've heard them like six times each or so, and I do feel like they've grown on me as well. I know I might sound pretty lukewarm and negative on both of these. Maybe some people are going to be like, well, you didn't really like these albums. You're just sugarcoating it because you're a fan of the band. Not really. If anything, my being a fan led to my having higher expectations for these albums. Post Truth and Black Daisy Wheel are still two perfectly solid and enjoyable techno slash ambient albums that I'd still recommend giving a shot. I just know they can do better than this. When they've had this big collection of other albums that I've enjoyed more to compare them to, these two just kind of come up kind of short. Maybe it speaks more to how much I love these guys when I feel like albums 12 and 13 are the closest they've come so far to a misstep in my eyes, and even then it's more treading water than anything. Hopefully next time they bring a stronger continuous mix or a more out-of-the-box idea. Regardless, as always, I'm going to be looking forward to whatever they bring to the table going forward. Bit disappointed by these, but I don't feel like my money was wasted. On Post Truth, I'm feeling a 6.7 out of 10. On Black Daisy Wheel, I'm feeling a solid 7 out of 10. On the two, if they were in the same package, I'd say 7.3 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.